Can I take my 50 watch collection down to 10? Let's get into it! Yes, and welcome to the Mad Watch Collector Show. Today is my January 2024 State of the Collection Show. Yes, my entire watch collection on show for you, minus the Casios. Save that for another show. Now, I've been putting off this show for some time now because A, I'm a little bit embarrassed of how big the collection has got and B, this sort of show takes ages to film. These watches are there because I love them and at some point wanted to wear them. I've got way too many. So this is not gonna be your usual state of the collection show. I am gonna try and take this watch collection and turn it into 10. Pretty impossible, but let's see how we go. Not only that, I'm gonna give you my wife's predictions on what she thought would be my top 10. So let's get on with it, shall we? Are you SOTC ready? Let's go. So ladies and gentlemen, I give to you my current watch collection. Uh, I know, it's too many, isn't it? But anyway, let me go through these watches really quickly. I'm not going to give you deep specifications. I've done shows on probably every watch here. I think we've got to go with the Seikos first. That is the brand I have most watches from. First of all, my Seiko Flightmaster, a watch that I don't wear, but wanted to buy. TGV made me do it. I do like the look of it, but it's also a little bit too busy for me. Definitely got a unique Seiko look to it, and I love it on this NDC strap. Next up, my 6139 Vintage Pogue. It's circa 1973. It's an automatic chronograph, and the 6139 was the first automatic chronograph to be mass marketed back in 1969. Then comes my Mini Turtle. One of my my favourite Seikos, but I just haven't been wearing it. It's a bit smaller than a regular turtle. I do love the Pepsi bezel and that dial. The Seiko 5 Day Day is a great bargain that isn't made anymore. I've really tried to wear as much as I can. I love the dial of this and it's simplistic case. What about my Seiko Tortoise? This is one of my best Seikos for under £500. It has a sapphire glass. 200 metres of water resistance. 4R35. The only thing that lets it down is the bracelet but we can swap that out easy enough it's a great watch but i have to say it is not as good as my land shark yeah, you'd probably say the predecessor to the tortoise. This is an old Seiko 5, which has a little look of an SKX. If the SKX decided to go hiking for a couple of weeks, we've got a compass, as well as a great twisty bezel. This is one of my favourite watch pickups of last year. And what about my Seiko Ani, my SNJ025? Absolutely love this watch for so many reasons. It's got Arnold Schwarzenegger all over it, and I love it. Then we come to the SRPK17, the 55th anniversary of the Seiko 5 Sports. This is such a good looking watch. And although it was limited edition, it wasn't massively pricey. But what about my Save the Ocean Samurai? This is a beautiful blue dial diver. And I have to say, if I was to ever come up with making my own dive watch, I would definitely have the knurling of this crown and the bezel. Lovely looking watch, very angular, quite wide. Then we've got to talk about my Seiko Willard, the SPB 153. Everything I think about in a Seiko is in this watch. The asymmetrical shape, the cushion style, the beautifully simplistic dial that just looks awesome. This to me is Seiko. This watch is going nowhere. Then we've got this great Seiko chronograph that was gifted to me by a subscriber. Cheers Ian. Good quartz movement, beautiful dial. Here's my SKX013. One of the first automatic watches I ever bought. I love this watch and I'll never get rid of it. And the final Seiko is my latest acquisition. The SPB411 Navigator. When I got this watch in for review, I had to have it. This is a reissue of the first Seiko with a twisty bezel and a GMT function. Beautiful size, beautiful dial, beautiful bracelet. It's a tad expensive for what it is with the 6R35 movement, but if you want these watches, you gotta pay the money. Anyway, let's move on and let me show you my Vertex Trio, the Manual Wind M100, my favourite field watch in the collection by a mile, then my M60 Aqua Lion, beautiful, tooly capable diver. I take 
any day over a Seamaster 300. And to finish off my favorite watch I own, the MP45, a mono pusher chronograph that was first commissioned in 1945. It was never actually made because the war was over. Don at Vertex brought it to life and just look at it. Talking of military watches, CWC. Yes, the Cabot Watch Company, the SBS Diver. This is my only stealthy black watch other than all my Casios. Here is the G10, which is a fantastic little field watch that was issued in their thousands in the 80s. Then we're gonna talk about this Quartz Falcon, lovely asymmetrical case, beautifully legible. And finally, the reissue of the 1980 Royal Navy Diver, the last automatic diver issued to the Royal Navy. And it is just a gorgeous watch. Very proud of my CWC collection. Then we have my equally awesome Zero West DB80, a watch that commemorates their Dam Buster mission 80 years ago. It has a piece of one of the Lancaster bombers that took part in that Dam Buster mission. Amazing watch, amazing story. Now a watch I don't really talk about a lot. I've been forced to keep it by the wife, but I think it might be going soon. My Fortis Cosmonauts Chronograph. This is a fantastic watch, 38 millimeters, a Valjoux 7750 inside, a perfect dial, bead blasted case. This thing looks brand new. Tudor, my twins, my Black Bay 58s. These are the best dive watches for me and my wrist. We gotta talk about my Rolex Explorer 214270. I must admit I've fallen out of love with. I've said it on many shows before that I'll never get rid of this watch, but I'm starting to think like I should. I feel like the crown is too small for me. Funny how your tastes change over the years. I've really been trying to like Citizen and I've got two pro divers in my collection. One is the titanium version. The other is the standard 316L steel version. Both great sizes with a myota movement inside. But have I been wearing them enough to keep them? No. Probably right. Okay, stop. Hammy time. And I've got three Hamiltons currently. My khaki field mechanical. I've really liked this watch and I've worn it quite a bit, especially in this brown variant. I also have a khaki Pilot Pioneer, a watch that is a reissue from one made back in the 70s for the RAF. Gorgeous sapphire crystal and that sandpaper dial is just cool. The last Hammy is a vintage one issued to the US Army back in 1982. This is only 34 millimeters. You don't have to wear big watches to be a manly man, okay? Super. Now the two Orients that have stayed in my collection. The Orient Star dress watch. Really love this one. It's got one of the most comfortablest bracelets. In-house movement, automatic. I do like that power reserve indicator. It's just possibly a tad too dressy for me. The other Orient, however, isn't dressy at all. The Kamasu. Currently on a Clockwork Republic FKM rubber strap. 200 meter diver, great bezel action. Great value too. This one's a good competitor for my Seiko collection. One brand and watch I haven't talked about a lot is Accurist. Now, when I got this in in the summer, I took it on holiday with me and there are some parts that I really like with the watch, but also parts that I don't. They've realized, like a lot of brands, that the best watches are the old ones. So let's look at our back catalog and reissue some of those puppies. And that's exactly what they did with this diver. There is something here that I really like, but it makes me very excited about this brand moving on. And for someone that is starting this watch collecting hobby, Acuras is a great shout. Um, could you just click that like button, please? It really helps the channel. Thank you. And now finally we come on to my micro brands or my independent watch makers. You get a lot for your money with these watches as you've seen on a recent show of mine with brands such as Duckworth Prestex with their Rivington GMT, the RZ Endeavour, which is a great titanium diver, the MAN 36 triple calendar, which I do wear quite often, I must admit. Beautifully made watch. The Heron Marinor, which not only is a beautiful watch, but also they've spent a lot of time and money, given the case and bracelet this scratch resistantness. Next up is the Momentum C Quartz 30, first made in the 70s and was made by Chronosport, where one of the owners now owns a brand called Momentum, and they've decided to bring this watch back. This watch definitely has a look of a CWC RN Diver. This one is very affordable. Do you like that touch of orange? <laughs> 
I don't have too many dress watches, but this one's beautiful, the Baltic MR01. This is a gorgeous looking watch with a micro rotor movement, very slim, very delicate. Now my only bronze watch, the Seagull 1963 limited edition, celebrating the 60th anniversary of this Seagull 1963. The bronze has definitely dulled down since I first got this watch. Haven't worn it as much as I wanted to, but I do love the case and this strap combo. Who doesn't love a Seagull ST19 movement, eh? And talking of that movement, check out the Laurier Gemini. Vintage looking chronograph with that same movement inside. Just don't wear it enough. Probably need to go to someone that will. Next up, one of the best micro brands around, the Zelos Mako, a dive watch full of high specification at great value for money and it's no surprise why these watches are quite hard to buy this is a great watch for anyone that loves their affordable divers just the best of the best then we come on to the range master a collaboration between the urban gentry and long island watch love the dial love the handset very comfortable bracelet a great field watch and we gotta talk about the heinrich torture haven't we this beautifully big and bold 70s influenced diver. I love the colour of the dial. I love the custard teardrops for the indices. The bracelet is amazing. This watch is killer. And we got to come on to a watch that I have absolutely loved. The Formex 39mm Essence with the Malachite dial. This watch has given me a newfound enthusiasm and love for Swiss watchmaking. Big up the Swiss! <laughs> There we go. That is the collection. We've skimmed through it pretty quick, haven't we? What I wanted to do right now and for myself was to pick just 10 of my favourite watches I could not do without. And I've got to tell you, this took some time. But before I do show you these 10, what 10 would you have chosen? Put it in the comments below. But here is the reveal. My 10 chosen watches. And yes, it was hard, okay? I've made some big decisions. I've let some watches down. I had to keep the Willard. I had to keep my SKX and I had to keep my Arnie. My favourite watch, the MP45 and my second favourite watch, the M100. The Zero West DB80 has also got a place in my collection. It's just too special. Of course, both Black Bay 58s have to be involved. The 1980 CWC RN Diver, that needs to be in the collection as well. And maybe surprising to you, I've kept the Formex Essence in here. I honestly love this watch. Watch. There's my tent. It's not a bad set of watches, is it? So we come to the wife segment and I asked her to look at all the watches and pick the 10 she thought I would want to keep the most. And here is her 10 picks for me. She's kept the Black Bay 58s. We've got the Zero West DB80. We've got the MP45. We've got the 1980 CWC Diver. We've got the Willard. We've got the SKX and we've got the Formex. She's done pretty well. So finally, this is my wife's favorite 10 watches from the whole collection. Take a look at this. And this isn't a bad 10 either, is it? We've got the Arnie. We've got the black Black Bay 58. We've got the Rolex Explorer. We've also got the Hamilton Khaki Field Mechanical. We've also got the Fortis Cosmonauts Chronograph. She doesn't want me to get rid of that watch. I'd love to know in the comments below your 10 watches you would choose out of this collection. Do you think the wife's picks are better than mine? Actually, don't answer that one. Could leave me a little bit annoyed. Launching very soon is the MWC Watch Shop where you'll see some of these watches for sale. It's time to purge the collection because I am serious when I say I need to cut this collection down. I know there are gonna be new watches that I'm gonna want. So if not for anything, I've gotta make room. You know, there might be somewhere out there a citizen I want. Nah. All right, what about a Tissot? Nah. I know there's definitely gonna be a watch that is added to this collection very soon. And it's the one I've been wearing on my wrist the whole time. Oh, yes, the Mad Watch Collector, Mad Hacker Field Watch in collaboration with Radcliffe Watches. I've got the prototypes in and I absolutely love it. More on that very soon. If you wanna support the Mad Watch Collector a little bit more, go on, click there, join. You want merch? Get on down in the description below. But if I've got you for a few more minutes, why don't you check this beast out? Oh. This is great. What a fantastic show this is. Go on. Click it, click. 
Clicky!